Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we're looking at early shotguns for the quest setup primarily but you can use these shotguns for other stuff too. This quest in particular has been moved much earlier than in previous patches so we're going to run through the best weapons, ammo and finally tactics to get this one done. So setup needs 15 kills with an MP series shotgun whilst wearing a scav vest and a Yushanka. We're going to begin with the guns and the possible weapons that you can use to complete this are the double barrel, the MP133, the MP155 and the MP153. Of these, it's a pretty easy choice to use the 155 or the 153 because these are semi-auto and the other two are not. I do have a preference for the 153 because it pulls down slightly quicker than the 155 after you fire, but it is pretty marginal, although it's quite cheap at only about 30k on Jaeger 2. Let's go and have a look at this gun, and you do get the longest barrel with it, which actually makes it pretty decent right away. To make the most budget version of this weapon, typically I will just add the target ring. This is one of the only shotguns that actually will accept the target ring, and I like the way it looks a lot. I've used it on a lot of my streams to complete various shotgun tasks, and I just stick this straight on. The 153 takes it as standard because of the barrel that we get given. In terms of muzzle devices, it actually doesn't matter that much, the recoil of these guns. It's obviously a nice to have, and if it's cheap to do so, then we will do. You could either go for the Remington Tactical Choke, and this is normally the one that I pick if the other one is sold out. The one that is slightly better is going for the Cylinder 12 gauge and then the GK02, which comes from Jaeger as well. This takes our recoil down to 195, which is still pretty high, which is why I think it doesn't matter too much, because the weapon will jump out of sight picture every time you shoot it, regardless of whether it's 195 or 250, but it's nice to have anyway if you're spamming. Something that I do think is valuable is getting a sprut on there which allows you to put lasers and flashlights. Normally I don't bother with a flashlight, I'm not really a big flashlight player but you can do it if you want to and I normally just stick on the TBL which is the blue laser and this allows me to see much more easily where I'm shooting if I am hammering on the trigger with this thing on semi-auto when someone is close range. The final important thing is the magazine. To start with, you only get a four shell mag at the beginning. There are a couple of different options, although they're not all accessible straight away. So the best one is the MP1338 shell magazine. Bizarrely, this also fits the 153 and it's much better than the 1538 shell because it's minus two ergonomics rather than minus six. There's not really any reason to use the 153 magazine. The other one that is potentially an option is there is a seven shell one, which is the 153. So yes, unfortunately the ergo is quite bad with minus five, but it doesn't matter too much. And seven shells is much, much better than four and i would obviously prefer it to six as well this is on jaeger 2 whereas the 133 and the 1538 shell you have to get to jaeger 3 to put these on which is a little unfortunate i waited until jaeger 3 to actually go and do setup because i wanted as many shells as i could get inside the shotgun so once we've chosen a magazine this weapon is actually pretty much good to go you can use it like this just fine and i got the first half of my kills like this if you want to spruce it up a little bit, there is another version that you can use, the Ergo version, and this involves replacing out the stock, and you put this on instead, the Tactica Tula stock adapter, which comes on Skier 1, and on top of that, you put the AGR pistol grip, which comes from Skier 2. Once we've done that, you then have a buffer tube, which again comes from Skier 2, and onto this, we could put any stock that we like. I think a good bang for buck one that you can do at Peacekeeper 2, once you get there, is the DS-150 stock, because it gives you a decent amount of ergonomics and also recoil reduction as well. This brings the recoil back to exactly what it was, actually, funnily enough, with the plastic stock and so all the whole thing does in the end is just give you 10 ergonomics which is fine if you wanted to go for the highest ergonomics that you can you could go for the gl core which is the stock that gives you the most ergo out of all of these this is not true for all stocks but it is for those that attach to buffer tubes and this would give you another six instead and take you to 41 but the gl core is a skier three part so you can't get access to that straight away there is one cheeky way of getting it which is if you go on the flea market and you look for the stm the stm comes with one by default so if you go and look through a lot of these listings will have one of these GL cores on them and so what you could do is you can buy this off the flea and you can just sell the rest of the gun back and then you get this GL core it's not as cheap as it is on the trader and sometimes it's not as cheap as doing it on the flea market but it is potentially an option let's just swap back to the DS150 for a sec just to see how much all of this would cost so even if you build the full build we don't need this we don't need the barrel and we pretty much need everything else that only comes to 71 72k this is extremely cheap for a weapon build and has slightly better ergo than it would have done otherwise now, skipping back to Jaeger, the other option was the 155. Now, the 155 has higher ergonomics to begin with. It's this guy here, and it is slightly more expensive by about 5k. This thing begins with 51, but one thing you'll notice immediately is you can't put on the target ring. You have to put on this regular mount and then choose a normal red dot, which I don't like as much personally, and is one reason why I don't like the 155 quite as much. There are also no other barrels, so there's no way that you can fix this, and you can't get a ribbed barrel to put that on either. 
The magazines and the muzzles are exactly the same as what we talked about for the 153, so I'll put on the 1338 rounder for the time being, and I'll put the cylinder and the GK02 on there as well. The monster claw is better, but this is a high level mechanic attachment, so you're unlikely to get this early. So typically, I only use the 155 if I really want ergonomics, and that's because the 155 can be kitted out with all of this Ultima stuff and make it look like a real space age weapon. So you put on the Ultima handguard, you change over the stock to this Ultima pistol grip. Onto that, you then add this thing, the Ultima Polymer Stock, and you get three choices in terms of the butt pad. I normally, these days, I don't even care about recoil so much, so I just go for the one with the most ergo, which is actually the thin recoil pad, and put that on. On top of this, there's a mount too, which is the Ultima Top Mount. You kind of need this. And then on the front, there's this other part, the Ultima Mount. This gives you another five ergonomics. So you can see here, now we've got 71 ergo on 198 vertical recoil. As I said, I still don't think it pulls down quite as quickly as the 153 from the testing that I've done, but this is certainly good. And you'll have a much faster ADS speed than you would with the 153. The 155 is probably better if you're wanting to use slugs because you're typically fighting at a slightly longer range. And although you might not want to put on an actual long range optic, something like the Monstrum two times probably works better on this gun than it does on the 153. You can attach lasers and flashlights natively to it as well because of all these cool bits around the side. And you can basically do this build if you get to Jaeger 3. Without Jaeger 3, you can't do this because some of the parts are locked to Jaeger 3. So for example, the Ultima top rail, you can't get this until you're Jaeger 3. So once you are Jaeger 3, then this does become an option, this type of build. But before then, I think I'd probably just use the 153. Excluding the scope for just a second, let's go and see how much this would actually cost to assemble the whole weapon. So we've bought the gun itself. We don't need to buy the barrel, but we do need to buy everything else. But as you can see, it's only 71,000 rubles. This is pretty much the same again as the 153. It's a very, very cheap weapon, which is one reason why I suggest them so much as budget options for players, because you can get quite a decent gun that's fully kitted out and it really doesn't cost that much. So next, let's talk about ammunition. This really boils down into two broad camps, which is either slugs or a buckshot style of cartridge. The setups that I use are typically for multi-pellet cartridges, and if you go slugs, as I said, you might want something a little bit longer ranged focus. Not too much, but maybe a bit. Within the non-slugs, you have the armor pen cartridges being piranha and flechette. You have magnum with super high damage, and then basically everything else. This includes 525, 7mm and Express Buckshot. For setup and early game shotguns in particular, Piranha has been my favourite. Now this has been moved to Jaeger 2 and is not craft only, it's only 231 rubles and gives you 10 darts per shot. The damage is relatively low with each dart only dealing 25, but with 10 darts that gives you a potential of 250 damage total, which is no joke. This is a little bit more than Flechette because Flechette's only got 8 darts with the same damage of 25, meaning 200 total. But the big difference about both of these is that they destroy armor because they actually have a decent penetration value and some armor damage percentage, unlike a lot of the other buckshot cartridges. Piranha is not as good as Flechette because it only has 24 penetration, but these days this is enough to get through class 2 protection, and given that most people are wearing soft armor on replaceable plate carriers that only has a class 2, then it means that you can kill them through the neck or the top of the hitbox on the thorax. Magnum is quite different to these in that it has 50 damage per pellet, which means that it headshots up to 100 meters. However, the disadvantage here is the huge recoil that you get given when you use this cartridge in a shotgun. Progression wise, this is only accessible on Jaeger 3 now as well, and the craft has been removed from the workbench, so it's a little trickier to get your hands on because it tends to be a bit expensive on the flea. Many people swear by Magnum and do really, really well with it, but the problem that I find is that for me personally, my muscle memory of using so much flechette in the past on pass wipes or even just 7mm buckshot gets ruined when I use Magnum because the extra recoil tends to make me miss and I just misunderstand how the weapon is going to handle. If you get used to it, it can be extremely powerful, both for headshots and for leg meta. The other buckshots are also decent, these don't have any recoil disadvantage and so you can either spam for headshots or leg shots as well. There's big damage drop off on these so typically they need two pellets to head tap outside of extreme close range and 525 is technically the best for this but the difference practically is very minimal. One small thing to note is that Express gets 9 pellets rather than 8 so at longer distances it's probably the one that's most likely to get a headshot outside of Magnum of these last few. As for slugs, I don't really use them all that much, but they can be okay. AP20 is really the one that you would want to use, but this is high level crafting only, which is a bit unfortunate because you basically can't get access to it by the time you get to setup, especially not these days. This means that a lot of people who like slugs have settled with BMG instead on Jaeger 3. And this struggles with class 3 and 4 armor, but again, it goes through the class 2 soft, so it's not too bad, and it's the second best pen that you can get out of slugs in general. Of the other choices, FTX is generally not actually that bad. It's a good middle ground of accuracy, penetration and damage, and it's available on Jaeger 2 as well. Super performance is the most accurate and now is on Jaeger 2 and is also the fastest, but this can cause it to shoot high at distance because of Tarkov's weird zeroing. Accuracy on slugs is important at longer ranges because the MP153 for example has 10 starting MOA and that's not even that bad for a shotgun, so you need to boost the accuracy using the ammo to prevent wild misses. 
So personally, I used Parada and I found it to be very similar to Flechette at the same rough progression point, i.e. Flechette is better, but setup came later in the past, so you'd be facing people with better gear on. I do think that people expect too much of Piranha. Unless you're really close, it is hard to get one or two shot kills simply due to the spread of the darts, and they don't do as much damage as many of the other multi-shot cartridges. But the armor pen means that you can just shoot at the neck area and catch face, the neck at class 2 at best, and the top of the thorax hitbox again with probably class 2 at best based on what people are wearing with any of the modular armors on, and this maximizes the chance of getting the darts to go through. Just before we talk tactics, let's have a quick mention of the scav vest and the Yushanka that you need to be wearing to get setup kills. The scav vest is very easy to get using the slickest barter from Jaeger, so don't buy them from the fleet because you're probably paying three times the price that you need to. The Yushanka is more annoying, you can technically get them from fence sometimes if you're lucky on the refresh, but broadly speaking you're probably just going to have to buy them from the flea market for 30 to 50k. These days you are allowed to use a headset with the Yushanka which makes the quest significantly easier than it was two years ago, but just make sure that you recognise that the M32s are not compatible so you'll have to use a different headset, the M32s will not work. The way that I tried to approach this quest tactically was to move into areas with high traffic keeping cover around me. I would go somewhere and then listen and then chase shots, but pathing through the map in ways that limit your sight lines is extremely important as you want your target to be literally 10 meters away at most, otherwise you'll begin to introduce inconsistency and RNG into the spread of the piranha shell. If you play in this way, sometimes it can be quite relieving because you know that within 5 to 10 meters you're probably going to have an advantage over the other player, so you don't have to worry about audio as much. As soon as you hear someone and they hear you, you can stop pushing on them, sensibly using cover, and then pop out at the last moment and blast them with the semi-auto. Next up, I'll show you a few examples of how this can work. Don't know if they're dead or not. And then we'll push them. They're dead. Could be a player still around here. I mean, maybe we'd, given we're at the dorms one, maybe we do just do the dorms thing. Not a proud kill, but it'll do. I think non-founding raid airdrops are a bug. I think I've still got this round. The laser flashing. See if I can swap back. Oh god. Oh man, <clears throat> too far distance. I should have uh, stayed closer. Oh. No information about this person now. 
They looked medium gear, like level 20, I would say. Something like that. I want to get audio on them before. I don't care about, like, making sound myself. On this side, this someone on this side. That sounds like a scav. I died from this side, I think. I'm not sure. No. <laughs> I'm using piranha. It's like gas. Even further. Let's go to bus station at least, because that's usually a bit of a crossroads. Don't want to fight anyone at this point. Okay. Probably in bus station, I think. Pushed by Miss Your Scav. That was a close one. About things. I haven't heard much else though. Oh, it's a. Oh, it's a. Oh, it's a flash drive. Oh, guys, we are leaving. That's it. All right, we're going. We're leaving right now. Have they fixed the? Not. I don't even want to loot him. It doesn't matter what he has. Literally makes no difference. Oh my god. Not one and Suka, no! Leave me the frick alone, one and Suka. That's someone on the gun. Someone on the big gun. Oh, no, it was a player. Ah! Jeez, sniper scav, like... Holy moly. Then you're not even sure where that, like, how, where that was from, because... Was that, like, the sniper on the tower? Because that's, like, actually insane if you shot me from there. Oh. Have I been seen? Oh, I have. Keep running. The speed! The speed of the Parada! The speed of the 153! It's intense. 
How did we end up in the same raid? That wasn't you, was it, Easy? Surely not. Oh! Nice. It is easier. It is in actually, it is actually easy eight. Dude. You feel betrayed? Using the Yule too, though. Fair enough. Ooh. Rich man. Emostat. Like it. Piranha, you're producing Piranha as well. <laughs> That's actually genuinely hilarious. You hit me in the head with one shell of Piranha. That's why. So you dealt 20, 25 damage to my head. So I wish you the best of luck with setup. As usual, a big shout out to all my patrons. And as always, have fun in your raids.